subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, my lovely business gurus. I am Theodosia Opong, and I come your way again today with a lesson in business management. Today, we are going to look at the meaning and the process of management. Remember, we looked at the forms of business organizations. Now that we know the various forms of business organizations, their characteristics, the advantages and their disadvantages. We want to look at the meaning of management as relating it to the business organizations. Get your books and your pens ready and come along with me because this is going to be an interesting lesson. Now, I am sure in a lot of your conversations, you may have had some form of greetings, especially when two people meet and you hear one asking the other, how is life? And you usually will hear a response like, ah, manageable. Have you ever given such a response? I'm sure you have. When you took your BEC, remember they asked you, how was the paper? And I'm sure for some of the papers, you said, ah, it was manageable. Have you pondered why we usually will use the word manageable or we are managing? Well, today, in our SHSR lesson for Form 1, we will understand the meaning of the words you've been using as we relate it also to management. And so, our first question today is, what is management? But by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain management. You'll be able to explain the process of management. You will also be able to identify the levels of management, be able to define a manager and identify the roles of a manager. Now, what is management? Now, having realized that you have used the word manageable or we are managing to respond to the question, how is life? Pondering over it, I am sure you realize that it's because you had an expectation or you had a vision or you had a hope. Maybe with your BEC, you were expecting the paper to go in a particular way or you were expecting certain kinds of questions or you were hoping that based on the kind of questions you were given, you will be able to answer all of them. But the goal or the aim of being able to answer all may not have gone the way you wanted it to. But I'm sure you have heard the word goal in this conversation I'm having with you now. Now, when we talk about management, the first thing that comes to mind is the attainment of goals. Management seeks to achieve goals. Now, what are goals? I am sure as we watched AFCON and Ghana was playing the match, all you needed to hear was goal. And by saying go, you expected that you will see the ball in the net of our opponents or the team we are playing with. And if it doesn't enter the net, obviously, it seems as if we have wasted all the time on the pitch. Now, in a football match, all we are expecting for the players to do is to score a goal. And that is what we want them to attain or achieve. In the same way with management, the main reason for management is to attain or achieve our goals. So what are goals? They are the desired outcomes. What you are expecting. They are the targets. They are the objectives that an organization or an individual seeks to achieve. And we're saying that with management, it is the attainment of goals. And so we can say that organizational goals guides and directs an organization towards desired outcomes. For instance, an organization could have a goal, for instance, a water producing company could have a goal of being able to produce 10,000 bottles of water in a day, in a year, 
multiplying it by the number of days they work, that is their organizational goal. That is going to guide and direct the organization towards that standard of performance. So by the end of the day, they'll be expecting that they have produced 10,000 bottles of water multiplied by the number of days and in a year. And that is what goals are. So do you have a goal? By that, I'm asking you, do you have any desired outcomes as you have started your first year? Are there any targets you want to meet or any objectives that you desire to achieve, achieve or attain? Sorry. And by that, we are saying that management seeks to achieve or attain goals. Now that we know what goals are, we are saying that management is the attainment of goals through a process. And so we say that management is a process. When we say a process, it means that we will take it step by step in order to attain that goal. Now, what is this process? We attain our goals through what we call the managerial processes. Some refer to it as the managerial functions. In other words, what you are expected to do in order for you to attain the goal. You say that there are four key managerial processes that we can use in which are planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. Now, these are the processes that are used in management. And so, in the first, we said it is the attainment of goals. Now, we're saying through a process or through the managerial processes of planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. Let's take some time to look at what these managerial processes are. I'm sure you have been using them in wanting to attain your goal. Now, planning. I'm sure you have heard this word over and over again. I am planning a birthday party. I am planning to go to this school. I am planning to go to this place. Now, in all of it, you realize that it is a plan or it is a hope to do something in the future. And so when we talk about planning, it is when you are taking strategies or you are deciding on what to do in advance. And so planning simply is deciding in advance what one wants to do. And obviously, any organization or every organization will have to plan in order to attain their organizational goals. In fact, you need to be able to decide what you want to do in advance and by that, come out with your organizational goal. And planning is very instrumental in determining an organization's goals. And so we will say that when you are planning, you need to define the organizational goals, then establish the strategies that you want to use to attain the goals. Then develop the plans that you are going to use to integrate the various activities that you would, or you would do in the organization. For instance, with the bottling company wanting to um, produce 10,000 bottles of water in a day, it means that before they will actually produce 10,000 bottles of water, they will plan. They will decide what exactly they will have to do. And by that, they will look at what exactly is our goal. And by that, a day goal or the daily goal here is coming out with 10,000 or producing 10,000 bottles of water. Now, what are the various strategies that we can use to produce 10,000 bottles of water? Do we have to work 24 hours to be able to get 10,000 bottles of water? Do we need people to work in shifts to be able to get 10,000 bottles of water? So here I'm outlining the various strategies that one can use in attaining their goal. Then you develop specific plans that we use to coordinate the various activities. So those who will filter the water, those who will bottle the water, those who will package the water so that at the end of the day, we are getting to attain 
our goal. And so planning is deciding in advance what one will want to do in the future by defining our organizational goals, establishing strategies for achieving those goals, and developing plans to integrate and coordinate the activities. You know that you also have your plan. Put that plan down by defining your goal, establishing strategies that you will use to achieve your goal, and developing plans to integrate and coordinate the various activities you will have to do in order to attain your goal. Now that is planning, the, one of the functions of managerial processes. Now the second process we'll look at is organizing. Now in organizing, I said we are planning a party. Then we can organize the party. What does that mean? Usually people organize so many events. And I'm sure you have organized certain things for yourself. So we are saying that in organizing, you need to arrange and structure the various work that is needed to accomplish the goal. So you realize that all our processes are still in relation to the attainment or achievement of our goals. So in organizing, you need to determine the kind of work you need to do. Remember, you have already planned and decided what you want to do in advance. So, you want to produce 10,000 bottles of water. What are the various work or activities that have to be done for us to be able to produce 10,000 bottles of water? So, we are saying that determine the various work that has to be done. Then, divide these works, arrange them and structure them. So, in producing 10,000 bottles of water, my layman's um, knowledge would tell me that, of course, they would source the water, then they would filter or distill the water, then they would go ahead to bottle the water, cork it, package it, label it, and put them in the boxes that comes to our homes. So, in organizing, you realize that some will have to help in filtering the water. Some will also have to help in cocking or bottling the water. Then some will also have to cock the bottle. Then some will also have to package the water. Now we have determined the various work that needs to be done for us to be able to get 10,000 bottles of water. Now we need to arrange these work, divide these work into roles, positions, responsibilities for the people that are going to do the work. And so with organizing, we say that it is the arrangement and structuring of work needed to accomplish the organizational goal. Now that we have arranged and structured our work, we are saying that you need to direct. Some refer to it as leading. Some also refer to it as staffing. But for your level, we would refer to it as directing. Directing simply, I am sure in your mind, you can even tell what directing is. The moment you say directing, what comes to mind? Leading people, showing people what to do, guiding them, and obviously you will say directing them. So what is directing? Directing is the process of working with and through people. So this managerial process concentrates on the part that guidance and leadership serves in attaining our organizational goal. And so if we are directing the people and we need to work with and through them, how do we do it? Of course, there will be a leader and there will be followers. And like we say, the superior and the subordinates. So the superior will become very instrumental with this managerial process. And the superior will have to use certain elements of directing, like communicating clearly to the subordinates what they are supposed to do so that they know what exactly they are supposed to do. He will also have to motivate them, boost their morale so that they can go the extra mile in accomplishing the goals. They, he will also have to supervise their work and ensure that they are doing what 
they are supposed to do. And so we're directing, we are saying that you need to work with and through people in the accomplishment of the organizational goal. Then the last but not the least, the managerial process of controlling. Now controlling says that now that you have decided what you want to do in advance and you have also specified the standards you want to meet in your plan, you have also arranged the work that needs to be done. And then you are now looking at how to work with and through the people. You need to evaluate. You need to assess if what you expect to be done is being done. So it is at the controlling process that we actually will monitor, measure the actual performance of our workers, and then compare this actual performance with patients. And when there are deviations, you use the control tools to correct them. And so the control process ensures that we are sticking to our standards by making sure that all deviations, if any, are correct. And if there are no deviations, then we stay on course. And so these are the managerial processes that are used in the attainment of our organizational goals. Stay with me. Remember, we are still looking at the meaning of management. And we have said that it is the attainment of organizational goals through the managerial process of planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. Controlling what? Planning what? Organizing what? And directing what? We are doing all these to our organizational resources. And so, management is the attainment of organizational goals through managerial processes using organizational resources. Now, what is an organizational resource? The organizational resources are all the assets of a firm that is used to develop, manufacture, and deliver the goods and services to our customers or our clients. Now, we can divide organizational resources into two, the human resource and the non-human resource. Of course, with the human resource, I'm sure you can give a lot of examples. In a bank, you can give so many examples. The, the tellers are there. Those who sit in the cage are part of the human resource. The auditors are there. The risk officers are there. The branch manager is also there. All these are examples of human resource. And we are saying that these human resources are the human capital that is used by an organization to actually produce or provide services to its clients. Then we have the non-human resources. Now the non-human resources, obviously by the word, I know you know, are the resources that are um, intangible. And those can be the physical resources, like the machines, like the plants in, in manufacturing firms, like the financial um, aspects of the business, which is the capital, the money. Those are the non-human resources. And so the non-human resources and the human resources together are the assets of a firm that are used to develop, manufacture, and deliver goods and services to our customers or our clients. Now, still with the meaning of management, we're getting closer to it. We are saying that it is the attainment of organizational goals through, the, through managerial processes using organizational resources in an efficient and effective manner. We are saying that it is not enough to have an organizational goal, neither is it enough to use the managerial processes and then also through the organization, through the use of the organizational resources, without doing it in a particular manner. You're saying that because organizational resources are scarce, you need to be very efficient. And because we want to attain our organizational goal, you need to also be effective. So what is efficiency 
and what is effectiveness. Efficiency seeks to solve the problem of scarce resources by ensuring that we are using less inputs and getting the most outputs out of it. And so efficiency is where we are using less inputs and we are producing more out of it. Remember that resources are scarce. And because resources are scarce, we need to prevent wastage of these resources. And so management seeks or ensures that we manage organizational resources in an effect, efficient manner. And this is where we use less inputs or resources and then produce more outputs with this input. And effectiveness says that ensure that we complete all the activities so that our organizational goals can be attained. And so those supposed to source the water for the bottle water must do their part. Those supposed to filter must ensure that they do their part. Those supposed to cook it, bottle it, must also do their part. And then those supposed to package it must do their part. And those supposed to bring it onto the market for us to buy will also have to play their part for us to be able to attain the organizational goal. Now, this is the meaning of management. We are saying that it is a process of planning, organizing, directing and controlling organizational resources in an effective and efficient manner in the attainment of organizational goals. I am sure you have noted the key points in the meaning of management. Now that we know the meaning of management, let's move along and look at the levels in management. Now we are saying that we can classify the levels of management. Now we know that at every level of management, we seek to attain the organizational goal. We use the managerial processes and we use the organizational resources as well. A lot of the times the levels of management, or let me say all the time, the levels of management is depicted in the form of a pyramid. To make it easier for you, I'm sure you can see different sides of a triangle on the screen. Now, this is what we call a pyramid. So, it starts, the levels of management is depicted from the peak at the top. And it runs, comes down to the bottom. Now, it is divided into three levels, which are the top level management, the middle level management, and the lower level management. So at the top, which is the peak, is the top level management. And the middle is the middle level management. And at the bottom is the lower level management. Now these are the levels in management. But what we depict in a pyramid, we show the base as the non-managerial workers. Because we have the workers in the firm as well. And because they are not playing any managerial role, we place them at the base. But when we are depicting the levels of management, we have the top level management, the middle level management, and the lower level management. Now, what are these levels of management? Now, at the top, of course, at the peak, will be those that are taking strategic level management decisions. Now, at this level, plans or policies or organizational goals that cuts across the entire organization are made. At this level, there are what we call the top level management, the top level managers. Now, these managers are the people that take strategic plans. So at the top level management, we also call it the strategic level of management. This is where they take strategies, they develop policies, they develop plans. And you know that policies cover the entire organization. And so we say that the top level management is the strategic level where policies that affect 
the entire organization are made. Then the middle level management are just below the top level management and above the lower level management. Can you hazard a guess or take a guess as to what they do? Of course, I am sure you are right. At the middle level management, they actually will break down policies that have been made at the top level into workable objectives for the lower level management to implement. So at the middle level management, we say that it is a tactical level of management because at this level, they would break down the policies and seek to implement these um, workable objectives or policies that have been broken down. And they'll do it based on their various departments. So at the middle level management, there are various departments that will break down the policy and relate it to their department and how it should be implemented. Then below the middle level management is the lower level management. And they are the operational level management. Now at this level, they are responsible for the day-to-day -day activities of the non-managerial employees. So all the workers who are not in managerial roles or positions are under the operational or the lower level management. Now at this level of management, they seek to ensure that the, the policies that have been broken down at the middle level management have been further broken down to be operational. And so on a daily basis, each person will know what they are expected to do. And these are the levels of management. They are categorized into three and depicted in the form of a pyramid with the top level management, middle level management, and the lower level management. Now that we know the meaning of management and we know the levels of management, it will be very important for us to look at the ones who are actually in charge of management in an organization. And you know we call them the managers. So who is a manager? I am sure you have so many thoughts of who a manager is. From looking at who a bank manager is to a managing director in a, in a big firm. Who is a manager? Simply, we can say that a manager is the one who actually does management. That is a simple one. But let's look at what the manager actually does. Now, the manager has the responsibility of coordinating and has oversight over the work of the people in the attainment of the organizational goal. So it is the responsibility of the manager to ensure that the organizational goals that have been set for the organization are fulfilled. And so every manager has roles. Every manager has certain skills that they must use in fulfilling this responsibility. And so in looking at who a manager is, we will look at the roles of a manager. Now, what will these roles be? Do you have roles yourself? I'm sure you have certain roles that you expect your parents to fulfill. You have certain roles that you expect your mom to fulfill, certain roles you expect your dad to fulfill. So I'm sure you can jot down at least one role you expect your mom to accomplish, one role of your dad, and then also your own role as a daughter or a son to your parents or any student roles that you have. All right. I know that the first role you are writing for your mom is preparing sumptuous meals for you. Mm. And for your dad, I'm sure you are looking at the cash, giving you some pocket money when you're going to school. 
Now, that is the role that you're expecting of your mom or your dad. And as a student, you know that the main role that you have is to study and learn. In the same way, every manager has roles. And so, let's look at the various managerial roles. Now, when we say managerial roles or the roles of a manager, we are referring to specific actions or observable behaviors that is expected of an office or a position. That is why when I mention student roles, you know that no matter the level of education that you are found on, so far as you are a student, one specific action that is expected of you is to learn or to study whatever you are taught. That is a specific action. That is a behavior we should be able to observe. When you sit quietly, look into your book, we see that you are studying and you are jotting down. Then we can see that you are studying. That is your rule. Every manager also has specific actions and observable behaviors that is expected of their office or their position. And these actions and behaviors are exhibited by the manager. So we'll categorize the roles of a manager or the managerial roles into three. We'll say that we have the interpersonal roles, the informational roles, and the decisional roles. We are going to take a look at them one after the other. Now, what are these interpersonal roles? Now, the interpersonal roles in the word, I'm sure you can take from the cue, interpersonal. You can hear the word person in there. So interpersonal, in between persons, if I could say that way. Simply, the interpersonal roles of a manager are the roles that a manager plays, which involves engaging people or which involves relationship, interpersonal relationships. So relationships with people who are outside the organization as well, who are the public, our customers, the community in which we find ourselves. And so the interpersonal roles are all the roles a manager plays, which involves engaging people or interpersonal, engaging in interpersonal relationship in and outside the organization. The manager does this in three different ways. First, as a figurehead. When we say a figurehead, the moment the president of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Dodanko Ekufuad, is seen in the USA president. The moment you see Nana Dodanko, His Excellency Nana Dodanko Ekufuad, you know that you have seen Ghana. Why? Because he represents the whole country. Now, in relating with people, he will have certain ceremonial and symbolic roles. So he has to represent the country in other countries. He will represent the country in certain meetings, and he's doing that as a figurehead. That is a figure that we all will relate to as Ghana. In the same way, when your headmaster or the headmistress of your school shows up in another school, the moment we see him or her, we are seeing your school because he is representing the whole school. So he's representing all the people in your school, students, staff in the other school, and he's playing a ceremonial or a symbolic nature at that. Thing. Between two parties, usually two groups of people, either as a link between top management and workers, or either as a link between people outside the organization and the people within the organization. When he does that, we say he's playing the role of a liaison, acting as a link between two parties. So when workers want him to talk about their salaries, he will do that on their behalf to management. That is playing the role of 
and liaison. He will also communicate issues to the workers on behalf of the board of directors. He's acting as a link between the board of directors and the workers. So he's acting as a liaison. Then one very common role we all know he does, but we do not know it's an interpersonal role, is the leader role. Now by playing the leader role, he will direct and motivate and communicate with subordinates. And that is the leader role. By this, he is guiding them and directing them as to what is supposed to be done. Now, that is the leader role. Now, these three, the figurehead, the liaison, and the leader make up the interpersonal roles. The roles that involve engaging people or engaging in interpersonal relationships. And so, when you notice your headmaster representing you at another program where you cannot be, know that he is playing an interpersonal role. Let's look at the next set of roles, which is the informational roles. Here again, you can take a cue from the word informational. And I'm sure you can have observable behaviors of a manager where he collects, receives, and disseminates information. So, gathering information and giving back information can be categorized into informational roles of a manager. Now, a manager does this through three different roles called the monitor, the disseminator, and the spokesperson. Spokesperson sounds very familiar, I am sure. I mean, sometimes when your classmate is talking and you haven't been asked to speak, and then you get up and start speaking, trying to explain things on his behalf, then people ask, are you, some, most of the time the teacher will ask you, are you her spokesperson? I'm sure you know who her spokesperson is then. That is where you are speaking on behalf of the workers. So the manager also plays this role by speaking on behalf of his workers or speaking on behalf of the organization or speaking on behalf of the board. By this, he is giving out information or disseminating information to whoever the party may be. But when he speaks on behalf of the organization, we say that he's playing the role of spokesperson. Then another informational role is the disseminator role. Now, by using the word disseminator, we are looking at how the manager disseminates information. Now, what do we mean by disseminating information? Where the manager gives out information. Now, when policies are made, just like we spoke about planning, when policies are made, it is the role of the manager to actually give the information about these policies, strategies, and plans to the workers, whether top level, middle level, or lower level. They all have a role of disseminating information. And the role of a disseminator is where they give information to their workers. The last informational role played by a manager is the monitor role. Monitor role. I'm sure you have used the word before. When we say we are monitoring, it means we are observing. And in this light, how does the manager play the role of a monitor as an the activities, the performance, and gathers information out of that? So by his observations, he is monitoring, gathering information. And he doesn't just gather the information, but based on his observation, he is able to come out with very good information or analyzed information as to the performance of workers or how our activities are running. So we say that the informational roles of a manager is where he collects information through the monitor role, 
where he receives and disseminates information, where he collects and receives information through the monitor rule, and where he also receives and disseminates information through the disseminator rule and the spokesperson rule. Now, these are the informational roles of a manager. We are going to look at the last category of managerial roles, which are the decisional roles. I'm sure you are smiling because you have gotten a cue as to what these roles are. Just like interpersonal roles, informational roles, now the decisional roles. And you are right. The decisional roles are all the roles that the manager plays by taking decisions or making decisions based on his status and his authority. So as a top level manager, he will have to take certain decisions. Remember, the top level management take what level of decisions? Strategic decisions, policies, organizational wide decisions, or the organizational goal. Then middle level will also have the kind of decisions they have to take. But generally, the manager has decisional roles to play. And these are specific actions or observable behaviors that the, through the entrepreneur role, through the disturbance handler role, through the resource allocator role, and through the negotiator role. Now let's take them one after the other. How will a manager be playing a decisional role of an entrepreneur? I'm sure you are wondering. Now, when we talk about an entrepreneur, we are saying that every manager must make certain decisional roles of being able to take his own initiatives. Remember, entrepreneurs are people who usually initiate one thing or the other. And so in the same way, every manager has a decisional role of taking his own initiatives. In other words, he should be able to plan ahead, come up with innovative ideas, and initiate new products and services that can satisfy their clients. And so a manager doesn't have to just sit and wait for all the decisions from the board, but it's expected that a good manager will play a decisional role of an entrepreneur. And that is the entrepreneur role, initiating setting products and services or taking initiatives. Then he has a decisional role of handling disturbances. Now, what are these disturbances? Disturbances are anything that can go on in the organization that will not allow the smooth running of the business action will have to halt, then we are saying that there are disturbances. And we are saying that the manager has a role, a decisional role of handling disturbances. How does he do that? He has to take certain decisions when there are disturbances as to how to ensure that it does not affect the smooth running of the organization. So for instance, they come to work today and there's a scaffold or there's a, there, there's a conflict that has led to a scaffold between two workers in the organization in a particular department. And all of them have stopped the work and they are shouting, yeah, 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 yeah. How are we going to do the work? We are going to lose hours of work. And immediately, the manager must take a decision to handle such disturbances. And that is the decisional role that the manager plays as a disturbance handler. Then he also plays the decisional role of a resource allocator. I like it when you smile like that, especially when you have understood or you can tell what that role will be based on its name. Yes, the resource allocator role is where the manager allocates resources. Now that is a decisional role he needs to take. Because he needs to decide who gets which resource from what. So imagine if we have just one printer. Which department are we going to give that printer to? The manager has to take that decision. He has to make that critical decision by giving the printer to the department that may need it most 
so that the others can go in there and print. Now, the resource allocator rule is also a decisional rule. Then the last in the decisional role of a manager is the negotiator rule. Yes, that is where the manager has to negotiate on behalf of either his workers or the organization. So he can negotiate on behalf of the organization with their business partners. And he can also negotiate on behalf of his workers based on their salaries. So he plays the negotiator role. He can also negotiate with workers on the kind of salaries or advances or increase in salaries that they may desire. Now, what does that mean? It means that he needs to come to an agreement with them. He needs to come to setting, he needs to take setting decisions with them. And by doing that, he needs to sit with the people and agree on something. And these are the decisional roles of a manager. And we said the roles of a manager are the interpersonal roles, the informational roles, and the decisional roles. Now, we have gone through the meaning and the process of management. Now, put down these trial questions. Define management. And with the aid of a diagram, identify the levels of management. And then the last question, outline the managerial roles of a manager. Now, let's try our hands on this. I'm sure you've already written the definition for management. So let's check if you got it right. Now, we said that management is the process of planning organa in the attainment of organizational goals. And with the aid of a diagram, we are saying that identify the levels of management. Remember, we said the levels of management are depicted in the form of a pyramid or simply a triangle with the peak of the triangle being the top level management, then the middle being the middle level management. And, and by that, it means you would divide your triangle or your pyramid into three and you identify the various levels of management. And the managerial roles, which we, are just end, we just ended with, are the interpersonal roles, the informational roles, and the decisional roles of a manager. Now, now you can define management. You know what management means. You can tell the various managerial processes, organizational resources. Then you can also tell me what an organizational goal is. Effective and effective of management and the roles of a manager. In our next lesson, we will be looking at the skills of a manager. You can do further reading from these references and then management by Robbins S. and Kota Mary. Meet the next time again in our lesson for business management. I have been your business management tutor. I am Theodosia Opong. All the best. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.